This episode of Further Up is brought to you by Chase McKinney. Thank you. Charlotte, what did the lion say? Hello friends, we're glad you're here as we adventure further up. I'm Ez. And I'm Sarah. And I'm Lane. And we're looking for Lewis. We're joining you now from the far land of Ohio, where eternal summer reigns around the bright village of Amanda. This week we're flying to the edge of Narnia and beyond in chapter 12, Strawberry's Adventure. Yeah. We're on a little adventure tonight, aren't we? We are on an adventure and it's fantastic. <laughs> we're having a good time. Yeah, you, you know what? Don't get too high. All right. Don't try to fly over those peaks. <laughs> Stick to the valleys. There has and been. And the green places. And there will always. What is it, Sarah? What's the there line? There will always be a way through. Wow. I like that a lot. He Did says it. Me? I wrote it on my hand. Look, there wow. it is. Proof. It came show off. The, show the. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. There it is. Because when, when he was curious, but. That's legit. Yeah. That's legit. Yeah, this one, this chapter was. Uh, strawberry in general, I think, is interesting. Yeah. You know, and I love too. So I do, can I do this right now, sure. just real quickly. Yeah, we're in tea with Thomas. Is so it okay, all right. Anything so goes. I had a friend send me this, and so to Rebecca, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Um, you are wonderful. Um, she kind of, um, yeah. Sarah uh, and I got one. Get these little cards, yep. right? So yep. it took something that we had said during mm-hmm. this podcast. And I'm taking this, and literally, this is going to go next to my quote that I've created on my board. Um, mm. You know, there ain't nothing to be afraid of if a chap's led a decent life. Mm. And the decent life is very, you know, bolded and big. And so it's just from Rebecca. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It just makes me makes me happy. It was just like such a you kind of hit it in the, you know, my my Zoom case or whatever. And I'm mm-hmm. like, what is this? What is this? And it's just awesome. I was actually going to whip yeah. it out during the episode, but um, yeah. Case beat me to it. Yeah. And then you got one that said... Courage, dear heart. Yep. Yeah. It's right by the... I can actually see it right now. It's on the ledge of... The mantle. Yeah, the mantle the, of the sink. The mantle of the, yeah. Yeah. Sink, so. um, and mine thank says... You, yeah, thank you, Rebecca. Mine says, see it through, which is the quote that stuck with me from um, uh, Return of the King mm-hmm. with uh, with Samwise Gamgee. And it's kind of crazy because that line that stuck with you, mm-hmm. you'll always be able to... F- there will always be a way through. There will always be a way through. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, see it through. Mm-hmm. There will always be a way to see it through. Yeah, it's perfect. That's those. And I was like, "What, Sarah?" I was like, what? "Our our f- like favorite mm-hmm. lines go together." Yeah. yeah, but yeah, pretty cool. That's awesome. Uh, how's everybody doing? Doing all right, my lady. How are you? I'm good. Are you gonna put the hair up or I leave it know. down? Or I feel very uncomfortable. Just there's you know lights and lights and cameras. That you, well, yeah, it's pretty hot under these asked lights. On the live, how long it took to set up? But actually, it wasn't that long. It wasn't too bad. Knock it on has some been wood. longer. Because it could still, it could, something could happen. But <laughs> I asked these guys, I said, do you remember the days when Ez used to just set up the audio <laughs> equipment and walk outside sweating? I think the worst, was the worst day <laughs> Tammy Lane when we interviewed Tammy oh, yeah, Lane. Oh yeah, because you guys were in a time crunch, weren't you? Man, I was so nervous that day. Yeah, well, or she, you had we had a date that, that she was going to yeah. call us or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. And we need to call her about Narnia and talk about Narnia. Oh yeah. Were she you? won an Oscar for it. Yeah. Oh, some, were you... Sweating, audio, you were a <laughs> cable or something. I, I mean, a lot. sweating their hair tips. That's let me think. Let me think. The, oh, a cable. Yes, and we it's always a cable did. or a card. Oh, it's something. The missing. cable or, or card. I remember when we did. You know, um, Shane. When we had Shane on, the, <laughs> yeah. inter, the internet was dying. The, oh, yeah. And it's like mid episode. I'm over here just drenched. Like, oh man, we're almost out of internet. You like, like oh, stop no. talking the second half of In the internet. Like, we uh-huh. did have like a newborn. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. we probably had the house wo- like really oh warm, warmer. Just warm. Yeah, true. Well, in the summertime. I oh, appreciate that. I appreciate that. It probably wasn't <laughs> too. Cover it for him? I don't know. Too too cold in here. You're Anyways. so sweet. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't no, take much to no, for you to start sweating. No, it doesn't. I'm no, doing well. Matter. Thanks for asking. It's um, it's been a long week. And Tell us about it. Um, it's just been a long. I mean. Yeah, long. Long, weird. Yeah. Wait, did you guys have a four day week, week last week? No, but the girls were sick. Mm. Uh, yeah. I thought President's it, Day, right? So, some there was, was that a, last week. There was a day where we had because um, we. No, I thought people were saying this week, or maybe it was last week, was like a when you when you come back from like two to three four day weeks or whatever. It's like what well, is yeah. this five? Yeah, days the stuff? girls were, what, yeah. the girls were sick last week, so I was only at school three days, and so okay. 
Yeah. Guess so what next week, week is? Really hard. Oh, daylight savings. Daylight savings time, Friday the 13th and... Oh, full moon. Full moon. Nicole Steeman, our good friend, sent yep. us... I don't know if I get shake. So can I say her name? You did. I just did. Yes. Nicole Steeman. Welcome our, to the podcast. Sarah's best buddy. Yeah. Uh, sent us a uh, like a little gif. Yeah. And was like, next week, guys. Yep. It was like people are sweating coronavirus, but teachers aren't because that's what next week is going to be. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. All that's happening all at once. Yeah. Pretty nuts, huh? Uh, That is crazy. For any time there is, whether it's Friday the 13th or whatever, I have you. I mean, this is God's honest truth. When the moon, when it's acting up or it's full Mm -hmm. or it's in some special state, I mean, the kids are different. Yeah. Yeah. They're a little. People are. People. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite is when the moon's in Ohio. That's my favorite state that it's in. (laughs) <laughs> uh, wait, no, but you're doing good you're beautiful you're very sweet you're glowing yeah. and you're pregnant definitely feeling the glow baby number three is gonna be here well already is already here right or next week or so like when's when's baby number three coming june 29th it's very strange because i can't june 29th see you i can see you though i can see clearly I now I do this. the wires are gone yeah there you go um Better? We do have potential as for baby number three might be an Uncle Sam baby. Like the, the, the secondary due date or whatever, yeah. or the more, is it the more realistic due date? Well, how's that? Just how it's measuring. July, July 4th, 4th, 2020. They don't change your due date Seriously? Though, so. July, June, 4th. Early July. So that's awesome. And if we split yeah. the difference and go right in the middle, it's Aragorn and Arwen's wedding day. Okay. July 1st, midsummer. Wow. That'd be awesome. Isn't cool. well, yeah, I mean either way it's going to be it's yeah. going to be great. But yeah. I love every every time, every time there has been it's like a, I remember when when he was born. It's a Tolkien date, bro. Talking about and it's just like yeah, And then my my on. birthday isn't even on the calendar. Yeah, not Go even look close. it up. August 31st is not there. So. Right. Yeah. Um how are you? How are you? Are you okay? Am I, me? You doing I, all right? You know, is good. ketosis fully kicked in? You haven't had yeah, any keto know, I, naps? I haven't really talked about ketosis on on, oh, yeah, this, on this podcast. So um, yeah, we told if you, if you have a chance and you listen here, um, full keto on, caveman, right? Yeah. Like on, on, uh, an unexpected podcast, I was talking about my keto guy <laughs> who's down there just chipping away. And so I, I texted Lane. This so is another story. This is another it's, story. So Sarah's it's really heard that good. story. You might want to patent that. Like, because oh, I, I think it. the keto guys are going to get a hold of it and girls. Oh, people are going to, yeah, it's, it's actually really, and they're going to steal it from you. Yeah. I think. Cause like, it's like a guy that I, so in just a quick summary, real quickly, I sent this guy down. <laughs> You know, to it's like metaphorically. What was, what was, what was, I don't know. You said it's the little up. guy inside of you that Whatever. is like the operating in, your system. Down there, who's in charge yeah. of your metabolism? He's breaking stuff down. Yes, right. He's in charge of metabolism in, in, in the flow of energy and all that kind of stuff. He was like, yeah, we're using carbs. <laughs> He's the foreman. This is a foreman. Foreman. That's what and, you said. Yeah, we're using carbs. Here we go. And I stopped giving him carbs to use, <laughs> and he was in a stupor. He was like asleep. Remember this? And like he was telling the other guys, it's they, such a good like. It was an energy like, crisis in your body. It was a crisis, yeah. and they're yeah. running to him like, hey, hey. You know, and he's like, what? what's going on? So he's freaking out. And then they, and he's like, and then we're he switching the fats. He remembers. We're switching the fats. Been storing this baby. fat for years. <laughs> this baby runs on fats. <laughs> so, and then the, it's like, all the leftover carbs. We'd put them in there and they turn into fat. Exactly. The funny thing was he would like, like, like to me, the funny thing was he go, I imagine this foreman who's in a stupor, like I'm about to get fired. You know, I'm going to get fired <laughs> from my job. He goes in and he opens the door to the other energy store and he goes, Holy <laughs> cow! There's, we I got some good stuff. <laughs> we <laughs> like boys. The crisis is over. <laughs> the gold rush is on, <laughs> fellas. Get in there. <laughs> You know, so like to me, it's been really funny, and I'm just sort of like thinking about this. So then, this is where this comes into because Lane asked me, he was like, "Where does the keto nap come in?" Because what yeah, the, what yeah, is what a keto mean? nap? We I, need to. I messaged explain. him at one point, and I was like, "I've gotten like three texts that say, sorry, I just got up from <laughs> keto, keto nap.'" Yeah, exactly. And so they're what like happens? hours after I te- or days I want after to hear I text. By me. way of how this foreman works, it's, this is exactly how it. This is exactly okay. how it comes into Ties play. Ties in. All right. So see, I Sarah's on it. She knows it's happening. <laughs> So they, they're in there, right? And it's like, at first, when you're in ketosis and, and you're, you're getting these guys switched over, they're passionate about it. The gold rush is real, baby. <laughs> We're in there and we are mining, right? Mm. And it is yep. coming off easy. Mm. And it's the fat that's it's stored. It's coming off okay. easy. And then it's not coming off easy. <laughs> Why is that? Because you've, they've Plata used enough of it. Or... I want to tell you something. Did they're you expecting know? more carbs to come through? Did you guys know? And I know this might be a little bit gross for people. It is what it is. Maybe too much information. It's, it's health There are related. different types of fats. Yeah. in your body mm-hmm. there's some that's like really like 
um, like saturated, dense or, not as yeah. dense, or dense. Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but you know, you're like, you're like your baby. The fat that's been there since you were like a baby, like some of that um, that's just been there for like residual yeah. fats. Yeah, whatever. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Long lasting fats. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but they were getting. They, they had got through the easy stuff. So that's okay. So there's layers. They uh, hit, essentially, they hit a hard line. I see. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. And okay. some of them, like it, they stuff were, ain't they coming were, off as easy, were, boys. They were wore out. <laughs> They're like, we're putting in overtime. So that's where your nap comes in. That's heavy, where I, heavy the, machinery. Foreman called up to me and he said, hey, we're going to have to shut it down for a little bit because we can't, we can't like, we're unable to get like what we need. So we're going to all stop. Okay. We're so do you wake stop. up hungry from this nap? Um, no, in a weird way. Like, is no, it like hitting a wall really? almost? Uh, yeah. And you just, I mean, I mean, I'm, when I talk about like, it's like, it's weird because I, I'll come home and. And, I, and my sister's like, hey, how was your day or whatever? Or my dad, I'm talking to him. And I was like, uh, I can't form words. I can't form words. And I'm like, I'm going to go sleep. Are you getting and enough energy throughout the day? Yeah. And actually, what's crazy is, remember, I was talking about my keto energy. I had so much. Because mm-hmm. uh, the foreman said, we're good for years. Like, <laughs> uh, but, then, but then it was like, okay, some of this has been here for too long. And it's coming off. It's, th- it's, it's harder to come off. You yeah. know? So that was just kind of my funny visual. I was thinking to myself. I love like, it. It's good. Because you know? I really, that's, I have no idea if that's even true or not. I just know that I was tired. And I was like, mm-hmm. I wonder what the foreman's thinking about. This. <laughs> Why are we so tired? So I'm like talking to myself through all yeah. of this. So to those of you, you know, here, uh, mm. ketosis, give it a try if you want. It. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it, the little foreman you. inside you will be glad you did. Oh, man. That's a, that's a really yeah. cool visual. It though. is a great. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I could almost envision it like as a cartoon. Yeah. An animated oh, me series. too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's totally a cartoon he's guy. He's a cartoon guy. The fat yeah. foreman. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and he's, he's, a, he's a big fella too down there. Oh, yeah. He's like, well, he's, we've talked about he's bearded and he's, bearded, he's, 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 he's nude. He's bald. Yep. yep. And he's. It just Does, I, has he put clothes on yet? Does he ever put clothes on? He's maybe cl- the more fat he burns, well, the more clothes because he's making more money. It'd be I don't he's know. getting paid. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Mm. They still all. He's a little cherub, you know. I really don't pick. I guess I actually do picture them with clothes, just so we're clear. Okay, all right. Yeah, but, I don't. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, you think people inside your body running around? It's weird, anyway. They wouldn't need know. it. They wouldn't need it. No, they probably wouldn't. The animals don't. Oh, you goodness. know, like. So running around hey, Aslan, they don't need any clothes. We, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good, man. Let's shift off my keto. I'm doing here. good. I did some. Uh, I did some painting a couple days ago, and I feel. I did some some painting and some writing, and I feel amazing. Good. I feel amazing. Good. Something I hadn't gotten hadn't gotten to do for a while, and uh, yeah, I feel really really good after doing so. Got the old oil paints out. They look good. And uh, just you know, did some landscapes and just thought. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna try and try and paint like any artist. I'm not gonna try and create art like anybody. I'm just gonna do me. I'm gonna do art the yeah. way it's just whatever comes out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna worry about how it looks. Even. I'm just gonna go with it. And yeah. It felt really, really good. Uh, and then just some writing. Got some writing done. And yeah, feel great. Good. Feel great. Love being with the girls. And uh, yeah, ready for baby number three. Bring it on. That's so awesome. Let's get Uncle Sam here. Little Ruthie. It's going to be little Ruthie. Oh, that's so great. Ruthie, Ruth Eleanor? I don't know. You're in charge of the names this time. Whoa. That's a lot of pressure. It's <laughs> a lot. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, whispers we hear. That's T with Tumnus. We'll break that out. Um, whispers we hear. No show news really uh, going on. Um, we mentioned Rebecca Rovney's letters. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Those are amazing. Uh, definitely lifted our spirits and and made us feel uh, loved and appreciated. Um, lots of great things going on in the group. Mm-hmm. Uh, people come in all the time. I think recently someone asked in Unexpected Podcast. They, did. W- they said, "Is there a pay- is there a group for mm-hmm. further up?" And Dan Couts got in there. Said, yeah. "Here's the link." So our good buddy Dan from college. Um, thank you for that, Dan. And um, I-, I think like since then we've had like five or six people every couple of days hopping over and getting in and yeah. uh, sharing awesome. their books. And I mean, there's all kinds of great stuff. It's wonderful. So yeah. go check that out. Um, we do have a poll from a couple weeks ago. We asked people, would you rather be a talking beast or a dumb beast? Uh, we had 36 people vote. 92% said a talking beast. Yeah. 8% said a dumb beast. Mm. What did you answer? I feel like, did we do this last time? Did we talk about this already? Talking beast. I said. I said. I said. I said. A, I said a, did we talk about this one? I think we did. That's okay. Oh, did we? 
Moving ahead. I don't remember it. No, it's okay. I, well, then what would you rather be? As me? Well, now I'm worried that I we did. <laughs> I can't. I think we did. It's coming did. back it's to okay. me. Oh, did we? Did I say a dumb beast? Maybe. Because I think that's what I, that's what I, that's what I said. <laughs> I feel like a dumb beast right now. So, uh, yeah, I think all right. Cool. Well, uh, I'll get a new pull out for this one that's because okay. I, I think I've got one in mind already. But yeah, um, <laughs> re- well, recap okay, on re- the just to re- poll. recap. What would you? What would you be? I said a dumb beast. I said the pressure to talk I is too said much. A dumb beast, didn't I? I thought I, I was the only one who said dumb beast. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Maybe I said that I. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> because I re- I specifically remember I, because I uh, said I didn't vote. I don't know how I missed I feel poll. like I feel like Don Monahan in when he's interv- interviewing Elijah Wood and Kino Das Bang Bang. <laughs> it's a bad question. It's a bad question. <laughs> uh, oh, so no. let's move on to the oh. Lion Roars. Uh, we're in chapter twelve, Strawberries Adventure. I almost said Strawberries Nephew. Uh, we got a little I summary. You were say strawberries with cream, like as in. Unexpected podcast. Uh, okay, so Diggory agrees to go to the lands beyond the edge of Narnia and bring something back for Aslan, and Polly decides that she would go with him. After agreeing to help the children with their quest, Strawberry undergoes a major transformation and is renamed Fledge. Yeah, so that's you a did nice... that thing just there with your mouth while I was reading. No, I didn't. Yes, I did, did not. No. I'm gonna pause for a second. Do you know he does this <laughs> interesting thing? I Sorry, don't. I'm taking this off track. No, Good. I don't do that. Where when someone's talking, he'll sometimes, even if he has no clue what they're saying, like that time he did know what I was going to say because he was <laughs> reading. Sometimes no, you do. He will mimic what they're saying with his mouth. I I, I challenge you uh-huh. sometime in your life uh-huh. to watch him do that. Yeah. I never, I've never Anyways. done it. My mom okay. doesn't do it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that was a great uh, summary, especially of the beginning part of the chapter. Photo. Which one? Is that the same thing? No. no. It's different, okay. but it's Sorry. cool, huh? Um, I love this. Is them? I think this is them napping, or not napping, but cuddling. Yeah, and then the dark figure. That's a really good one. Um, yeah, these some of these uh, illustrations in the book themselves. I think they're the originals. Uh, I'm not totally sure, but just awesome little pen drawings. Um, so that's a great explanation, especially the beginning of the chapter. We we also have towards the end. There's kind of a brief encounter that reminds me a lot of. Um, well, we weren't sure in Lord of the Rings if it was Saruman. Oh, yeah. We thought it was Saruman, yeah, but yeah. it ended up being somebody else. So just That's kind of right. a creepy, it ends on a, yeah. a nice little creepy note. Right. Um, so we're in it. Uh, we were kind of in the middle of a conversation. So this is part two of the conversation mm-hmm. between Diggory and Aslan. Um, last chapter ended um, just making sure that we, we got a uh, kind of a, not a, I don't know if we'd call it a confession out of Diggory, but just a Aslan helping him realize, you know, why he did what he did in charm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and also just the shock to realize that Aslan knew about that, that he right. had knowledge of what transpired in that world as well. And um, wanting, wanting, that, wanting that apology to happen, that mm-hmm. something that we, we probably haven't even really thought about. I mean, we, we know that that hurt was there, but there was no reconciliation yet. And I think it's interesting how that's one of Aslan's first interactions with him was to ensure that there was reconciliation with his, his friend. Um, So that happens. Aslan, um, you know, um, leads him to that point. And Polly says, yeah, you know, we've made up. It's all good. And then Aslan said that as well. And now for the boy himself. Mm -hmm. So um, Diggory, uh, you know, had been growing more and more uncomfortable. Didn't, uh, didn't want to speak first kind of a deal. Um, Aslan comes in, says, son of Adam, are you ready to undo the wrong that you have done to my sweet country of Narnia on the very day of its birth? So here is the charge. Here's the challenge that he's giving Diggory. Um, you, and, and really you look at this and you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta do, I have to, I have to do something here, but he's, it's amazing that he's giving him this opportunity to mm-hmm. make right mm-hmm. what he did wrong. Yeah, yeah. Even, even if it was kind of. Uh, you could argue that it was unintentional. He didn't realize the ramifications of right. what he was doing when he did it. But how important of a lesson that is too, that you oh, don't yeah. always know what's, you know, what will come of, of something seemingly a small action. Um, and it's Digger who says, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I can do. Mm-hmm. Queen's gone, ran away. And it's the lion who, this, <laughs> this lion, man, he cuts him off before he's even done. I asked, are you ready? Yeah, it's like let's go. I asked, I mean, it's, it's let's go. Are you ready? And I think about okay, so like not like how are you gonna do it? <laughs> right, right. It's like 
but no. Right. Mm-hmm. I just back spit it up all over the microphone. It's okay. But um, this makes me. It just takes me back to uh, okay. Like it's personally, it takes me back to my first times reading through like the Gospels, and you've got Jesus talking to his disciples. Yep. And every time there was a well, I mean, well, I like how do you? What are we? There's always an excuse, uh-huh. or not even an excuse. Um, mm. And we do it. We do it all the time too. It's like, I mean, what am I supposed to? D- yeah, no, I didn't ask. To. What do you think you're supposed to do? Yeah, or how I are asked, you going to do it? Like right. we're not. Well, let's not even think about that. Yet. Right. right. I haven't even told you what I'm asking. You don't even know what I'm asking you to do yet. That's I right. said, "Are you ready?" That's right. <laughs> wow, it, it just, is good, and I did it, think of that too. I like of the uh, yeah. Did it make? It, I think it's a natural, talking, and probably maybe yeah. what he would have been kind of alluding to, or just that idea of you know, Aslan is a master. He's one in one in great control. Yeah. Right. And uh, obviously a creator of worlds. Right, right. And you've got a boy who has a, a beautiful heart. Like he, he's still thinking about his mom, primarily concerned with his mother's health. That's the whole reason he's even right. like, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, here. He's approached the, Aslan. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. And um, so even even him being that, he's still, you know, a, he's a, a servant. He's He's got that kind of, uh, I don't know, um, there's that dynamic going on. So. Uh, yes, said Diggory. Um, f- for a second, he uh, had a, a, hmm. this wild idea about saying that, um, try, trying to kind of bargain, bargain yeah. to bargain with the lion that I'll help you if you can do something for my mother. Like this thought comes into his head. Um, but he realizes that, you know, this isn't the kind of lion that you do deals with. Um, How many times? Yeah, I'm just. I, I think how many you know, we, with God or you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you 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 just say you know I'll do this if this, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. not that's not always yeah. how it's gonna right. work. And it's, right, and it's not what's best even is it? It's no, just, right. It, it's, yeah, you tr- you try to. I don't know. I don't know why we do that. Is it because we're so insecure? Maybe like what? Why do we do that? It's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it. Some of it is. It's hard for us, I think, to see beyond all of us to some degree. Our, little, our own, well, sure. Well, we get caught up in our own, mm-hmm. our own, yeah, life, yeah. our own, our own thing. Yeah. This is the life that we're living, and this is you. Know, we think about yeah. ourselves, yeah. right? Well, and, and it's hard to be selfless, and no. you know, like I don't know. Well, and you're. I mean, you're absolutely right because later Aslan says, you know, I have to think of not just you That's right. and your mother, not just us right now, but right. hundreds of years in Narnia. Right. And what's going on right now is bigger than than all of, yep. you know, what, what you're thinking about. And so that is a, a different perspective. Aslan's perspective is much broader than Diggory's. And he's, and he's not saying it's, <laughs> he's not saying it's more important. Nope. He's just saying it's different. And he has, has more people to consider. And to this moment, <laughs> this moment, I know, man. But can, I, can, I, can I say one more? Yeah. So when, right, like, because you're about to get to the next paragraph is yep. uh, Aslan is kind of mm-hmm. says to him, you know, um, when he tells him, he blurts out about his mother. You know, he finds instead of saying, "I'm not, like, if this, then that, or if you, if I do this, will you do that?" He says, "No, no, no." But please, is there something you could do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there something you, you, you can? Can you help me uh, get, get get a cure for her? And mm-hmm. it there's only like li- I mean, the way he says it in this land, like Aslan and he are the only one. This grief mm-hmm. that he shared has, grief, they, they, like he shares, and he can share it with him, and others don't. And he has great, almost like. I don't know, empathy, right? With, with, uh, I don't know. It just, it struck me that like that I think would be in a way he showed his, like his own grief and like the, is his, uh, how much he cared for him by showing him those tears mm-hmm. and by showing mm-hmm. him how much he cared. He didn't have to really do that, mm-hmm. but he does. And if, if you could take anything from that, it's like, okay, I'm not the only one going through not it. Alone. And I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. The yeah. vulnerability so, of, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, it's an amazing moment. Um that was something that I read hit me. Sarah read, she said, "Do you did you get to this part yet of cuz I don't think you'd known if I had read it or not and mm-hmm. and we both talked about it. That's something that I actually I got on my iPad and I started trying to illustrate. I'm working on illustrating it and I've I've started with his eyes and I can't get the eyes right yet. Yeah. And as soon as I do, I'll be putting it in a doc. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, because I it, you just yeah, it's it's beautiful. Um right. So yeah, he he and he's he has this lump in his throat and tears in his eyes and he just feels like all the hope 
uh, to help his mother's dying. Like, I think he's afraid that the lion is just not going to either, either he's going to take this challenge and not, and he's afraid he won't speak up in the future or the lion is just going to find it unimportant. And so what Aslan does is so important that, that he shows that he does care. Um, up to, I'm just going to read this part. Mm-hmm. Up till then, he had been looking at the great at the at the lion's great feet and huge claws on them. Now, in his despair, he looked up at his face. What he saw surprised him as much as anything in his whole life, for the tawny face was bent down near his own, and wonder of wonders was shining. Te- uh, wonder of wonders, great shining tears stood in the lion's eyes. They were such big, bright tears compared with Diggory's own that for a moment he felt as if the lion must really be sorrier about his mother than he was Mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. Um, Amazing. And then he calls him, uh, you know, son, my son, my son, said Aslan. I know grief is great. Only you and I in this land know that yet. Let us be good to one another. But I have to think of hundreds of years in the life of Narnia. The witch whom you have brought into this world will come back to Narnia again, but it need not be yet. If it is my wish to plant a Narnia, uh, in Narnia a tree that she will not dare, that she will not dare to approach, and that tree will protect Narnia from her for many years. So this uh, this land shall have a long, bright morning before any clouds come over the sun. You must get me the seed from which that tree is to grow, and so he's. He's, he's identifying to him. He's, he's, a lot, he's letting him know that, hey, we, sh- we know the same grief and that you're not alone. And he's also saying, you doing this is going to help protect this land. It's going to make right this wrong. Um, it's also interesting, too, to think like when, when, when he says Narnia awake, we just assume like this whole land is Narnia. Mm-hmm. And I think it was hinted at last chapter and then, uh, you know, again, yeah. confirmed here again that Narnia is but a small kingdom within this much larger world. Right. And that while it may grow, they, we, we see as they fly on strawberry fledge going through and they're looking down and thinking, oh, you know, I wonder what kind of history. There's no history yet. Nothing has mm-hmm. happened. No one has even been to these places. Right. And someday there will be. How, you know, eventually Narnia can grow beyond what it is, like all kingdoms do, but that this land is much bigger and that um, the goal is to keep the the white witch or the wit, the witch out of yeah. Narnia. So really, really cool. Kind of crazy to think about. Real quick, just yeah. you said earlier that he, um, that Aslan almost knew what happened in Charn and he also, like he, maybe he, he still, he wanted... Um, he wanted it to be spoken to him, but at the same time, he he says here he calls him my son, my son. You know, it's not so. It's 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 not even just like son of Adam anymore. Yeah, right. He Much more my, intimate. My. He's now my son. Yep. And I was like, wait a second. And so, then he, yeah, and then he goes on to use the term dear son. Yeah, and it's like yeah. it's like they're, they're becoming closer and closer. And, right. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's almost you feel like in this world, this this Aslan is is, is an aspect of whatever creator you know, like there mm-hmm. whatever is creating worlds yep. is all connected in one but it has various aspects yeah right. that's what it kind of made me think i'm like oh wow that's really interesting. like taking Wait. different forms almost yeah. kind of deal mm-hmm. yeah yeah so yeah uh yeah it's very cool it's really really cool um so you know diggory says yeah I- i'll do it um has no idea how it's gonna get done but he had this feeling that he would be able to do it yeah couldn't even really explain it. He just felt sure he'd be able to Which do it. Which is amazing because his he has an an, he's asked his question about help please help my mom. Mm-hmm. Aslan said nothing about yeah. helping at this right. point, but still Diggory says, Yeah, I think I can do it. Like yes. in his mind, he's already thinking. Do you think do you think that he um like also thinks too that you know, there was that bargaining aspect. Does do you think he thinks in his mind too, if he does do this right, then somehow maybe something can be done for his mom, whether by the power of Aslan or by some other great power that by him making something right. Making this that act, his, doing yeah. This act. Do you think that there's an aspect of that? Cause I think I that's honorable. Think that. I think that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that that can be a good motivation in people's lives. Even if you don't have no guarantee of that happening, yeah. happening, right. that's coming from a place of wanting to help so that mm-hmm. those, I mean, cause man, my gosh, like that is so, he's not asking for material items. He's not asking for, you know, he's not even asking to move right. back to his home. Mm-hmm. He just wants his mother to be well again. Right. right. And and so like that as a motivation, you can't that's that you can't fault that at all. And so I wonder if that's maybe what he's 
part of what right. he's thinking too. Like if I, if I do this, then, you know, right will, right will happen all around. Um, yeah, I don't know. Perhaps. Yeah. So, uh, this is really cool. Uh, he gets this kiss from Aslan mm -hmm. kind of almost like, I almost view it as like this, this, like this blessing mm -hmm. kind of a deal. Uh, I drew a deep breath and we saw this, the importance of Aslan's breath, breathing on the creatures, uh, you know, allowing them to speak. Um, now here his, his, his deep breath and giving him a lion's kiss. And at once there's this transfer that happens, right? Diggory felt that new strength and courage had gone into him from this, from this interaction, from this touch. Yeah. Amazing. Let's go. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I've had, I, I know moments in my life where I've experienced that, uh, whether it's like a hug from my parents or, a kiss from uh, my girls or, you know, from Sarah, uh, some embrace or holding my hand or something like that. I mean, are there moments you guys know that have been like a, mm -hmm. an Aslan kiss that for lack of a better term that has yeah. like give, has renewed your strength and courage oh, yeah. in your, mm -hmm. in your heart. Can you guys think of anything like specific? I can moment. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I can think of like, and it's less of like a physical touch or breath or anything like mm -hmm. that, but it's more of a lot of times to me, it seems like it's, words of encouragement a lot of times okay yeah you know, mm -hmm. we will message each other and it's sort of like i whether yeah, it's something that's a through, great point right something mm -hmm. yeah, like mm -hmm. throughout the work week or whatever whatever or like that. um exactly yes yeah, mm -hmm. rebecca sending this exactly like i remember when i saw that i sarah was in here and i was just like let's go this is <laughs> this is awesome i'm serious i you to get it gets things like that get me fired up i i i we said this um we really said this in the episode lane and i were talking a couple weeks ago on an unexpected podcast about it was Mount Doom and we talked about a spiritual battle and we've talked about it here mm -hmm. several times. It's actually the reason we talked about that so much in that episode is because it started here yeah. mm -hmm. and we were talking about that, you know, just good versus evil mm -hmm. and breaking it down in that regards. And so those moments like that for me was a marker. And I remember like I've, I've thought back on it and I've actually shared what we've talked about. I even played a small bit of uh, this podcast and that mm -hmm. one to some of my coworkers who were trying mm. to, you know, pick each other up mm. and do essentially what Aslan is doing there mm -hmm. and passing on some type of strength to one another or encouragement, you know, and mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. So I don't know. I feel like I, I, I feel that, you know, it's, yeah. it's real. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is real. And that's a great point. It doesn't have to be a physical, right. um, in this instance it is, but yeah. you look, uh, I mean, I guess his strength was also bolstered by his words, you know, that only you and I know that grief, like that, that's, that's leading up to that interaction can you think of anything specific or anything I can't yeah specifically I'll, I'll keep thinking but yeah i think it's just you know how do you best feel that look i mean if you go like if you've ever talked about like little five love languages mm -hmm. or whatever yeah um so yeah i mean mine is like being in community like the like presence of other people um so it's kind of all that combined the physical mm -hmm. the you know the the presence and being with being Qual surrounded quality by, time you love quality yeah, time yeah mm -hmm. yeah um yeah, I can't. I'll, I'll keep thinking, mm -hmm. but no, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, and and it sometimes it happens so much in a day that it's hard to pick just one. Yeah. Oh, you know, sure. one aspect. I mean, I think like some some days, I'm teetering between, you know, feeling totally competent and then feeling like total despair, and it, it just mm -hmm. depends on who I'm around and and um, you know, I'm I'm here at home and I feel great. I go to school sometimes. I feel. You know, like, uh, like every, the whole world's trying to get me to, to mess up. And right, then I right. come back home and I feel great. And I have interactions with my wife and mm -hmm. maybe, you know, certain kids at school and I feel, feel fine again. And it's just some days it's that like, slow. yeah. Yeah. And you, and it's almost like you have this several times in a day, even just to keep you kind of like hopeful and new strength and courage. Right. You know, you know how like we talk about like, um, so Lewis and Tolkien and how they use nature and how God can almost mm -hmm. manifest or like a spirit can manifest in nature. Yeah. Like, like I feel sometimes like you go out and why do we talk so much about the weather? Sometimes mm -hmm. why do we ask each other, you know, what's the weather like? We or can how, feel it. Like? We, yeah. You mm. feel something in it. And then almost like for some reason, uh, I remember back when I was at the NAS, I had a professor, Professor Maurer, I think was her mm -hmm. name, right? And, yeah, Caroline. Uh, yeah. We, she and I shared this love for a misty rainy day mm -hmm. and she was sort of <laughs> <laughs> was very loud. so does yeah. the cops so does the cops excited uh but you, i don't know if you remember yeah. i think you, you were saw my video the other day right which one yeah oh yeah oh yeah the ranger the range oh yeah the trail right. yes it, like like it, there's something about there's a memory that i have 
Um, and it goes, it's, it's weird. Like I've had very good days mm-hmm. or something has happened and that was the weather. And so sometimes those I cor- are magical you, days. You correlate mm-hmm. it a little yeah. bit. You sort of go, Hmm, something's up here, you know? And then when mm-hmm. it comes again, you, you feel it and you start looking for it. Mm-hmm. And actually I think when you start looking for the good mm-hmm. and you start looking for the good in people, you'll find it. And I think too often we, I've, I've actually been almost like picked on sometimes because I ignore the bad. Mm-hmm. a little too much mm-hmm. or not the bad, but whatever you want to call that, you know, like I, I, I tend to hyper focus on, no, this is good with, even with my kids. I'm like, this is what we're, and we're taught to do that. Like there's mm-hmm. strengths, like take yeah. those and let's, you know, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. Just my thought went from no. weather to the strength. Well, nature. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever, yeah no, like, I was oh, thinking yeah. about that to piggyback. Like I can sometimes feel that kiss in music, like through music, which I know we all love uh, yeah. music. And so, especially what your favorite part of the song is. Oh, I love the bridge the of the bridge. song. Like, oh, yeah? Oh, come yeah. on. The yeah. driving bridge. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Love it. Um, one, in One Republic especially, they do the best bridges, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Um, but sometimes you just find that strength and courage in, you know, yeah. nature or yeah. music or... Yeah. 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 Huh. They actually, they've actually done studies or like I read something once. Maybe it wasn't actually a study. It was just an observation that like some of the most prolific writers have come from areas where there, there are a lot of rainy days. Really? And mm-hmm. it does something... I think a lot of writers agree that it does something kind of inspirational. I don't know if it's because you're forced to stay inside. Sure. Okay. And it's kind of like, um, I don't know, when I think of a, like a rainy day, you're, you're much more um, introspective. You know, you go in because it feels like, you know, you can't see the clouds in the sky. Well, you can see the yeah. clouds, but you can't see the sky and the you're sun. Kind of, and Yeah, you're, you almost feel kind of, you're forced to go in more. Yeah. And maybe that draws something out of you as a writer. But yeah. Gotcha. I should yeah. be a really good writer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one, one more thing, because I, I, I just thought of this. It, it connects to what Sarah was saying about music. Um, a bit of advice. You are a really good writer, but that's fine. Yeah. 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 Um, a, a bit of advice for anybody who's listening and even for you guys. My mom told me, and this is so, 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 so true, at least for me, very much true for me and my family. And I've, I've talked to my sister about it, and my dad even agrees. Um, she said, and this was like the year leading up to, and I've been working on my book by the way. Mm, good. And so it's funny how like, as I work on that little things will come back to me. And she shared with us a piece of advice. She said, when you're feeling down, she's like, just sing a song, hum a tune. Mm. And she was like, you'll instantly feel better. That's great advice. And, and I was like, mom, you know, come on. Like I sing a lot. I do different things, whatever. And she's right. Mm-hmm. Like anytime where, like, where I, after work, I get in the car, whether I turn on music and I, I, I thought to myself, that is mom and dad always had like a church tape in, or they had mm. like, something playing or they would be singing um in the car we're just going to the grocery store right mm-hmm. but they'd a tune with you know whatever or we'd sing some goofy song in the car mm-hmm. and it made you feel better mm-hmm. like when you're singing with your kids yeah. or when they sing like for some reason it feels very happy and it's like oh, yeah. it, and then, that, then i take it all the way back to what we're reading here and yeah. we're reading in tolkien and i'm sort of like Creation oh it's all there from. it is yeah. like other people think that too that oh yeah song is very um a song in the Bible too. A lot of the way you, ways in which you would glorify or praise God was through song yeah. and joyful noises and things. So that's so interesting. I don't know. This week I had a really difficult time, just a lot going on in my head. And so when I am constantly having those introspective thoughts, that it's like feels negative and it feel you know whatever. And I turned on music. I actually had time before a doctor's appointment. And I turned on the yeah. radio. I don't ever turn on the radio. And I heard a couple of songs and I immediately felt better. I'm out of my head. I'm listening to words that are encouraging, you know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and it did feel better. So yeah. I'm going to take that advice. Mm. Yeah. It's, Sing or hum a song. It's, I, it, once you like someone next, cause I maybe, maybe you would know that or you would figure that out, but to hear somebody actually say yeah. to you, this is a strategy and mm-hmm. use it, try mm-hmm. it. You know, and I'm like, okay, so I've been doing it. You do like, sing a lot, as you know I that. Do, oh, yeah. don't, I do. I I always hum like too. Just at ra- or at my, random times. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My That's students, my go-to for us. This is funny, real quick. So they have, um, oh my goodness, they, uh, what is the one? <laughs> Justin Bieber. Oh, the one I always sing. Oh my, it's funny because like in different settings, I sing different things, you know? <laughs> yeah. So for, like, like for them, I walk in and, and I remember this, uh, two of my students were like, you sing that all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> what? They're like, what is that from? I was like, I have no idea. I don't know if I just made it up or if it's just like, it's my feel good tune yeah. when I come into the room. Um, I don't know. I sing a lot of different. That's awesome. Funny songs. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I, it's like to piggyback. I thought. <laughs> 
<laughs> to piggyback off that, like I find that I am happiest doing art when I got music playing. Sorry. Um, like I, I don't know if it's my best art, but I feel best when I have. A, even if it's one song that I loop, Sarah knows I do this. It drives her nuts. But I, oh, I if it. I get into a song, I will loop it to oh, like. Will, well, me too. Me I mean, too. on the way back from yeah. Rohirrim Gathering, we played the same song yeah. for probably three yeah. hours. Three hours, and, and it actually became. We switched, and then you went to sleep, and I still was playing it, it when you woke it, up. It, when I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have minded. Like it, it almost becomes a part of your rhythm. Oh yeah. And it's like okay, I, I like this energy. I can yeah. live here. This is doing something for me. This is freeing me up, and so I, I will do that with uh, mm -hmm. with art. I'll, I'll get certain either a, a genre, an artist, or even a specific song, and I will just play it and play it, and it helps just loosen everything. You know, it gives you a little courage. Yeah, I, I know we want to move on from this, but well, I, can't. I don't. So this is me, great. Like, so there is. You gonna go um, live again or what's? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I want to. I want to show this to you guys. So hopefully, I don't accidentally play this on the podcast. That'd be embarrassing. Um, Sherston shared with me. A band, and I can't even say the name of it. Someone have Lane say the name of it because I'm I'm literally have no idea how to. The road, the that's it. That's it. So it's the Sugar uh, Rust. Is it Novo? Novo Amor. Novo Amor. Is yeah. that how you would say that? I think so. Yeah. So I think it's like I love it, and I could just listen to their stuff. I mean, kind of on repeat, like whether it's the same mm -hmm. song or it's multiple songs. I. Don't know what it is. And she recommended multiple bands, but that one just like stuck with me and I just absolutely loved it. Yeah. yeah. Cannot get yeah. enough of it. Yeah. And so if you're interested in new music and you're out there oh, and you yeah. want something that's kind of like got a good vibe or whatever, go for that. I like that. It's a good plug, cool. baby. It's a good plug. That's right? really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Let's get back into it here. Um, yeah. Right. Oh, so he felt this new surge of strength and courage within him. Uh, Aslan calls him dear son. And then he lets him know, I will tell you what you must do. Turn and look to the West and tell me what you see. So kind of cool too that he's, he's saying, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I love that. He doesn't, he doesn't tell him what he sees. He says, mm -hmm. you tell me what you see. Mm -hmm. uh, I see terribly big mountains, Aslan. I see this river coming down cliffs and a waterfall. And beyond the cliff, there are, are high green hills and forests. And beyond those, there are higher ranges that look almost black. And then far away. There are big snowy mountains all heaped up together like pictures of the Alps. And behind those, there's nothing but sky. I have a thought. And yeah. Maybe it's a lot of frozen. But I'm thinking of Jadis. Does she, is she towards those snowy mountains? Oh, yeah. Is she headed that direction? Oh, yeah. It's cold. It's, it's distant. It's, yeah. 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 Anyways. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and because we kind of know who she becomes, right? So right. Yeah, there's a connection there. Yeah. You see well, said the lion. Now the land of Narnia ends where the waterfall comes down. So we, we actually know where the mm -hmm. actual boundary is. And once you have reached the top of the cliffs, you will be out of Narnia and into the western wild. You must journey through those mountains till you find a green valley with a blue lake in it, walled round by mountains of ice. At the end of the lake, there is a steep green hill. On the top of that hill, there is a garden. In the center of that garden is a tree. Pluck an apple from that tree and bring it back to me. Mm -hmm. So he knows what he needs to do, where he needs to go now. But, um, you know, he's taking a look and he's thinking, I'm not going to get back anytime soon. It might take me a little Aslan's while. Aslan's going to take me a while. And Aslan, of course, has already thought of this. He says, little son of Adam, you shall have help. Mm -hmm. So this is where he, he turns to Strawberry, who's uh, swishing his tail around, keeping the flies off him, listening with his head at one side, as if the conversations were a little difficult to understand. I always think of uh, Arwen and Arwen. Michaela. They would, mm -hmm. you know how dogs do that thing? And so yeah. you can envision, totally envision Strawberry doing the same thing. And I love that he asks. Mm. Uh, you know, he doesn't just, doesn't just do this to Strawberry. He asks him, uh, my dear, would you like to be a, a winged horse? And so cool how he shows us through his action, how Lewis shows us through just the way he responds uh, through his actions. You should have seen how the horse shook its mane and how its nostrils widened. And with, little, with the little tap, it gave the ground with one back hoof. Clearly, it would very much like to be a winged horse. But it only said, if you wish, Aslan, if you really mean, uh, I don't know why it should be me. I'm not a very clever horse. Mm -hmm. So how his actions even mm -hmm. speak more clearly than his words. It's like, well, I mean, yeah, if 
I don't know why you'd pick me, but yeah, I would yeah. love to be. Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking here. I know this is the, this is sort of the beginning and everything, but like, is this is are there other? Is, is he it? Is he the first one? Yeah, he's I think it. So. Father of all. I mean, I, th- I think he even goes on to say that. I think. Um, oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Be winged. Be the father of all flying horses. Oh, well, I mean, literally. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so, um, and then he gives him a new name. Interesting, um, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and that his voice is so powerful here that it shakes the ground. Um, your name is Fledge. And so you kind of think of like fledgling, right? Like mm-hmm. beginning to fly. Like a, when a bird's a fledgling, they're just learning how to fly. And we also kind of see that, uh, I think it's right here, when he starts to fly. Um, how he, uh, Lewis is very um, uh, intentional to let us know that he's not totally graceful yet. That, you know, horses aren't a natural flying creature and that he uh, is a little awkward at sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh He's surprised, but he's also extremely pleased. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so the horse, he kind of shies, um, kind of like in the old miserable days when he would pull a handsome. Then, then he roars. Uh, it strained his neck and back as if they, as if there was a fly biting his shoulders, and it wanted to scratch them. So kind of where these wings are going to come out. And then, just as the beast uh, had burst out of the earth. There burst fo- uh, burst out from the shoulders of Fledge wings that spread and grew larger than eagles, larger than swans, larger than angels' wings in church windows. The feathers shone chestnut color and copper color. He gave a great sweep with them and leapt into the air. Twenty feet above Aslan and Diggory, he snorted, neighed, and curveted. Then, after circling once around them, he dropped to the earth, all four hoofs together, looking awkward and surprised, but extremely pleased. Yeah, I think this is awesome, actually. Like, the more yeah. I think about this, you know, I remember when I first was sort of like, wait a second. Actually, it's weird. I'll just say it. Like, I was a little bit off put, like, when Strawberry starts talking, and you're sort of like, well, wait a second. Don't you understand what the cabbie's saying? And the cabbie, Strawberry's saying, well, don't you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. And it back and forth or whatever. And that was really good. Uh, it was just a little bit kind of off-putting, right? And then now you're like, this this is the shadow facts of this. Like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is Strawberry's awesome. a big deal. This is big. Big deal. It, yep. it, I hope, I don't know how, and I have no idea mm-hmm. if, like, there are more horses like this. Yeah. I really don't know. And yeah. um, I hope that there are. And this is, like, the lord of all horses. <laughs> and, like, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, let's go. And what yeah. role will he take on kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. yeah. I think it's just cool, too, that, like, that whole... Um, uh, like even the metaphor you could apply of, of Aslan giving flight, you know, and helping learn, helping this creature to learn to fly and how he's ascending. Just, it's just really, really cool. Um, and then he asks me, he says, is a good fledge. It's very good. Aslan says fledge. And then he asks him, will you carry this little son of Adam on your back to the mountain Valley? I spoke of what now at once said strawberry or fledge as we once now call him. Hooray. Come on, little one. I've had things like you on my back before, long, long ago, when there were green fields and sugar. So just kind of cool how instead of him pulling, you know, a handsome, he's got a, a little boy back mm-hmm. uh, riding on him and that it takes him back to those days. Yeah. You know, because yeah. even as a horse in London, he thought about, we learned that he, you know, he thought about those days mm. of being back in the country yeah. and how the, the heaviest burden he had to bear was someone riding a bareback, you know, yeah. and that, yeah. that's something that he longed for again. And here you go. He's got it. Yeah. Only he can fly. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't yeah. know. It's just, it's crazy. It's so cool. Um, so then uh, Aslan notices that the daughters of Eve are whispering and uh, Queen Helen formerly Nellie. She speaks up. She does. She says, you know, uh, the little girl would like to go too, you know, if it's not a problem. And of course, Aslan asks Fledge, you know, what say you? Mm -hmm. He says, I don't mind. Two, not when they're little ones, but I hope the elephant (laughs) doesn't want to come as well. (laughs) What joke are we on? (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah, right, right. right. Uh, The third joke, the third joke. (laughs) Um, So elephant, of course, wants to stay on the ground. He's not a Dumbo. Um, and the new king of Narnia helped both the children up. Uh, that is, he gave Diggory a rough heave and set Polly as gently and daintily on the horse's back as if she were made of china and might break. There they are, strawberry. Fledge, I should say. This is a rum go. So Aslan kind of gives him directions here too for flying. Um, he says, don't fly too high. 
uh, don't try to go over those great ice mountains. Mm-hmm. Uh, look for the valleys, the low place. Interesting, right? That he tells him to or tells them to look for the low places. Yep. Come on. Um, yeah. Uh, the high road sometimes goes through the valley. Mm-hmm. It does. Just saying. Come on. Uh, so so I look for look out for the valleys, the green places, and fly through them. There will always be a way through. And now be gone with my blessing. Whew. Guys, there I mean, will always yeah. be a way through. There will always yeah. be a way through. Yeah. How does he know that? I mean, he's created this world. That's right. how he knows it. Right. Yeah. He, mm-hmm. you know, that is so encouraging. It really is so encouraging. That's why it's written on my hand. I, I, because I kid you not, like back when we first started this, right? And I was like, I mean, gosh, like right before, like at the end of the school year, going into the school year, I told you guys, like I needed that cabbie quote. And like, mm-hmm. It's just funny because like now I'm like, I'm, well, I'm good. Like it's, every, things are good now and I feel really good and I've had just a good, you know, 2020 and, and stuff, but like there's still stuff that crops up and it's just nice to know. And looking back now, I'm like, it's, it's funny because there was a way through mm-hmm. and I made it through when I didn't think I was going yeah. to literally did not think I was going to, I remember calling you guys and saying like, I'm not going to make it. Yeah. I'm out. I can't do it anymore. Like I'm <laughs> done. And, but yet here I am. Yeah. And it's just very encouraging. That's going to be one I'm going to have to write on my board. And yeah. he's not telling yeah. them how they're going to make it through. Yeah. But trust that there is. Like, look for these yes. certain, I'm giving you these focal points. I'm giving you these things to look for. And that's a, hu- that's that. a huge point. And trust that they will know how to find those. Because you're right. Like that, those are really vague directions. Yeah. yeah. Just stick right. to the green places and the valleys. What? But you're right. He, yeah, he and trusts Jodis them. And is out there, yeah, and he knows yeah, that. Yeah. He knows that she is there, but he's saying, you know, Man, weather that's a or, huge, wow. you know, whatever might pop up. Mm-hmm. And really throughout this, he, he's built that, I know that we're only like, in my book, we're only like a page in, two pages in, but that's, he's built that this, this, in whole, this whole time too, is he trusts that, yeah. you know, Diggory's, he's going to see well, you right. know, when he asks him, what do you see? He trusts that, um, Diggory will choose to make this right. Uh, he trusts that uh, Strawberry is going to want to fly. Yeah. He, he asks tell- them every time. It's not, I'm going to tell you what's going on. And he trusts that Strawberry can get them there. Yeah. Because Strawberry doesn't know either. Never been here. A part of me too thinks, and I, I totally agree with you on, on everything you just said there. Yeah. A part of me also thinks that the reason he, now it is, Th- everything is going to be okay. You have to believe and trust in what Aslan has told you, and you have to sort of go by faith a little bit here mm-hmm. and just yeah. go. And what you have to say to yourself is that, well, it will be fine. Jadis is out there, but this, it's almost like I am about the king's business. All right. And there's nothing that will stop me. Yeah. Right. Um, this was ordained by Aslan, and he will see. And there is nothing. You know, but, yeah. but where you'll get in trouble is when you lose sight of that, mm-hmm. you know, and, yeah. y- and you have to remember what was it's not, don't get sort of, um, in your own, like, you know, Fledge wants to maybe seize those mountains. I think we could mm-hmm. wait a second, you know, what, yeah. who sent me on this mission Yeah, and who, true. I don't know. Right. Uh, yeah. I true. Think about that a little bit. And, I don't know. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, so good. Wow. It is. It's just amazing. I don't even know where I can. I lost. Yeah. Sorry. There will always be a way through. Yeah. Um, yes. Always be a way through. Blessing. Yes. There you go. Uh, and Diggory's having fun here. He says, oh, this is fun. Hold on tight to me, Polly. So in a moment, they, they're they they're up, you know, um, like a huge pigeon uh, circled once or twice before setting off on his long westward flight. Hmm. Looking down, Polly could hardly see the king and queen, and even Aslan himself was only a bright yellow spot on the green grass. So they're just they're getting so high up, and you start to see the the perspective of Narnia from the sky. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, many colored with lawns and rocks and heather and different sorts of trees um, lay spread out below them. The river winding through uh, like a ribbon of quicksilver. They could already see over the tops of the low hills, which lay northward to the right. Beyond those hills, a great moorland sloped gently up and up to the horizon. On their left, the mountains were much higher, but every now and then they could see a gap when, 
between steep pine woods, a glimpse of the southern lands that lay beyond them, looking blue and far away. That'll be where Arkenland is, said Polly. Yes, but look ahead, said Diggory. For, uh, for now, a great barrier of cliffs rose before them, and they were almost dazzled by the sunlight dancing on the great waterfall on which the river roars and sparkles down into Narnia itself from the high western lands in which it rises. They were flying so high already that the thunder of those falls could only be, uh, could only just be heard as a small, thin sound. But they were not yet high enough to fly over the tops of the cliffs. I love how he describes things. I know exactly mm-hmm. what he means by a, a small, thin sound. Mm-hmm. Um, so good. And he does it so simply too. Uh, he's just like the master of that. So like, there's a different land that they're like. That's what I mean. This mm-hmm. this this Arkan land, right? Like, yep. This is what is this? I mean, right. Yeah. Like? And, right. Yeah. And it's not Narnia. Um, hmm. Yeah. So we'll have to do a bit of zigzagging. Said Fledge. Hold tight. Um, it's so cool. They're so high that they hear the call of eagles far below them. So I think of like. It's almost like when you're up in a plane, you airplane. know, you're in an airplane and you look down and you see the tops of clouds yeah. and you're like, holy cow, we're yeah, like, going on? Yeah. we're almost mm-hmm. in space. Um, they could see everything, uh, the whole Valley of Narnia stretching out, see these jagged mountains. So we get great uh, view mm-hmm. and, and an idea of just how large this world is. We didn't know before. Uh, it's massive. Yeah. It almost feels like to me like it's continually growing. I don't know that, it, but in my mind, I'm almost imagining this. As they're flying. Yes, this world extended. that he kind of began and like ripples, it's continuing to Do just. Do we ever see the edge? Unveil- it, right, yeah, right, that's my yeah. thing. Like, is it just continuing to develop and, and grow and further I, and further? I love that's what I'm, the, dig- the conversation they have, right? I wish they had oh, yeah. someone to tell us what all these places are. Yeah. Polly's, I don't suppose they're anywhere they're yet. They're nowhere yet. Wish. Yeah, right. They're not anywhere. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that there's no histories. Um, but s- someday there will be, you know, so they're just even kind of, you know, having conversations about, you know, the, the land around them. Um, so eventually Narnia sinks out of sight and yeah. they're flying over the wild country, steep hills and dark forest following the course of the river. Interesting too, that they're following a river, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The importance of rivers. I think like even, uh, when people talk about the cradle of life, situated between the Euph- Euphrates yeah. and the Tigris yeah. rivers, how rivers are a life source, you Seems know? Safer. Yeah. yeah. Civilizations build next to a river because you have water and it's just a, a constantly fresh and uh, a source of transportation even. And, well, um, and Aslan t- told them to look for the green places, right? Yeah. So there's going to be, be water. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah great point. Um, so they, they start getting a little tired. They've been flying a while. Um, starting to get chilly too. Polly says, you know, it's none too warm up here. And mm-hmm. Fledge says, my wings are starting to ache, um, but we don't see our destination. And they start to realize they're not going to come to it by day's end. No, that right. it's going to be a, a couple of days of, of, uh, of voyage here. And they're it's, getting hungry. Yeah, they're getting hungry. Uh, they're, they're showing their hobbity nature here, <laughs> right? Um, Diggory says, surely it's time for supper. Which is interesting. Sorry, I'm going to pause for a second. Yeah. Have they eaten this whole time? Oh, uh, since like the pools and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Don't since know. London. I don't even know how much time has passed. Really. They, they didn't eat Because Polly, well, Polly goes back to, goes back to, what, didn't she go back to dinner but oh, got in yes. trouble? And so didn't have dinner, but I don't know if, she, yeah, I can't, I can't even remember. Because it's been a the, while the, though. The fight at the lamppost, mm-hmm. how well, long? Yeah, yeah. And then how long home? have they been in Narnia? We don't even know. No, uh, yeah, we don't even yeah. know. That's a great point. Yep. So, so I wonder why. Why all of a sudden are they saying, "Oh, it must be dinner time." Good and question. Getting hungry. Maybe maybe all that excitement is kind of worn off a little bit. They're traveling. It's like even though it's magical and it's sort of monotonous, and they're getting. I don't know. It's a new world. Is yeah. there day and night now at this point? Yeah. Is there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is there? Does time make? I yeah. don't know. Yeah. When time's always been, from what I've known, right? It's just time's different. Yeah. yeah. Too. Right. So. Well, and yeah. it's becoming night. So you right. would think, yeah, yeah, it's time for dinner. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Time for supper. So Fledge comes lowering down. Um, I, I love this description here, too, because I just you just know what this feels like. It, warmer and warmer towards the earth. Mm. Um, it was nice to hear the homely and earthly noises again. You know, they, they heard that beating of wings for so long and just being up and removed from all noise up in the sky. The chatter of the river on its stony bed and the creaking of trees in the light wind. A warm, good smell of sun-baked earth and grass and flowers came up to uh, them. Good smell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
fledged lands, uh, the kids roll off. Stretch and, their legs. Yeah, stretch their legs out. So uh, they kind of look around them a little bit. Um, they're in a valley. It was in the heart of the mountains, snowy heights, uh, and rose red reflections in the sunset. So quite a, a beautiful place to be landing for, for dinner, right? Yeah. Diggory says, I am hungry. Hmm. And Fledge says, well, come on. There's plenty of food here. Right, right. Ripe yeah. grass. <laughs> gra- Fuck in. Yum. Ripe grass. Ripe grass. Mm-hmm. Uh, tear off a bit and, and enjoy it. <laughs> Don't be shy. Yeah, don't be shy. Uh, we can't eat grass, Diggory says. Mm-hmm, said Fledge. Um, well, you know, you, you're going to have to learn to. Um, so Polly and Diggory kind of have this dilemma. They're like, what are we supposed to do? Like, surely uh, Aslan would have thought about, you know, providing us dinner. Like, he wouldn't have sent us here to like, because st- we could starve, you know. Like, oh, yeah. he wouldn't have overlooked that. But they don't know what to do. What are we going to do? Um and Fledge is just continuing to promote grass. Just just dig in, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll be fine. Who knows? Maybe Actually, well, the grass tastes pretty good in Narnia. Maybe it would. <laughs> maybe no, it like, really, like, I know, like mint, minty winter fresh is what I'm thinking. I don't know. Um, so it's really cool. They, uh, they talk about um, putting the rings on. Or, or um, Diggory said that Polly had better take herself take by that. ring and go back and get some food mm-hmm. in London. But then they're thinking like they don't really know uh what would happen um she doesn't want to leave him right yeah polly doesn't want to leave him and diggory said it was jolly decent of her and then she remembers that she's got some toffees in her jacket Mm -hmm. uh you know and that'll be better than nothing Mm -hmm. but they've got this dilemma because the rings are also in their pockets so you know and digger remembers just be careful to not touch your ring um so uh they do the they do a a difficult delicate job and they, by the end, they get out a very um, squashy and sticky paper bag full of toffees. Uh, and it was more a question of tearing, I love this, more a question of tearing the bag off the toffees than of getting the toffees out of the bag. So some you gr- guys know what that's like. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. I think of caramels. Honestly, I'm trying sometimes to think caramels, of sometimes your dad's caramels, dad's, if they're yeah. laying around long enough, you got to rip the paper off and then it's yeah. just... The wax paper, yeah. yeah. You eat what's left over. Can yeah. I tell you, can I tell you, when we, were yeah, desperate, when we were desperate in church... Yeah, back in Kentucky. We were desperate, yeah. right? What was did it? You did you eat... Knew, like, we had... Did you eat the gum off the bottom own, of the pew? No, no, but <laughs> it was did. there. <laughs> and uh, it had been there since the church was erected. I don't know how long it was petrified, stuck in there. I thought it was a... you know Petrified turned to stone. We yeah. would, and this is so funny, and I, I, I love this lady, and I love her dearly, and my sister will understand where I'm coming from with this, but you just did not, unless you were desperate, you did not eat Aunt Betty's candy, <laughs> because it had been in that purse, I don't know how long. Oh, she had a stash. Of course she, she did. Stash. My grandma had a stash. She had a stash. And you knew, though. She still like, has a stash. Aunt if, Betty had a stash? If, if <laughs> she had a stash. If we didn't, if we ran out of stuff behind wherever oh, yeah. or whatever, you know, we forgot to bring it. So what was it that t- stuck? It was, it was a caramel. It okay. was a caramel. And right. it was. Because I have um, another one when you're done. The, uh, it was, she had that. She also had gum. Gum that was ancient. Oh, mm-hmm. gum. I mean. Some, like, some wrappers stick to like, gum, too. Like you open it and it feels it like it's ABC. Of, it was hard candy. You had to suck on it for a while, okay? <laughs> and then, like, eventually it got soft. Then you could chew it. You ever have um, Trident that got all mushy because it got hot? Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Hot oh, yeah. gum oh, yeah. is the yeah. worst. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Aunt but, Betty. It's, it, but, you know, like, so yeah. it was like, all right, fine. I don't like. <laughs> The, I'm hungry thanks, enough. Yeah, Here's buddy. Like, like s- sincerely, some of your so, services are pretty long, though. Well, and I was about to yeah. say, so like on a, on a Sunday where it's just one preacher, we're fine. Get a glass of water, we'll be all right. Get some gum. Get like, but then the second preacher would get up, and I look to Sarah, like my sister, like oh, this is getting long. It's another two hours. I hope Brother Dennis doesn't get up. <laughs> Next thing you know, Brother Dennis, if they've got three preachers going, I'm like, good lord, get Aunt Betty's stash. Let's, we're gonna be here a while. <laughs> like that's what life was like growing up in my little one room school. Church. Oh, that's awesome. Crazy. You were desperate for them toffees. We really were. I'll tell you another one that I recall. So not not just caramels, but like as a kid. All right, all right. My grandma and papa uh, had a big old jar of they candies. Do. They still do. But Jolly Ranchers. Now the fresh ones on top were fine. Have oh, you ever had a Jolly sticky. Rancher that's been sitting yes. around for a couple weeks? It is st- weeks, like months. months. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and. Sticky. Oh, my favorite. Okay. So, yeah, you got to peel the paper off and it's like like all spiny where it's been, right, you know, right. like it's been like yes. ripped off and the, it's gooed up. Yep. But when you bite into those, how there's like a the film. outer layer. That's right. 
has right. been gummified, That's so you're right. like, mm, like you sink just, down until you hit the core, and you're like, wait, well, you there's the part I gotta ranchers? suck. No, I would scrape that part oh, off, yeah, 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 yeah. and then kind of like enjoy it that. It had a weird but, texture. Yeah. Yeah. It was like it was yeah. like a. a, a it was but like you a, wanted that Jolly Rancher. You were desperate. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But and, and that slime, not slimy. It's not slimy, but that gooey part uh-huh. of the Jolly Rancher was the appetizer. Oh yeah. The main course was oh, what yeah. was left over. Oh yeah. So it was almost like two candies in one. It, no, I know. It's, and you know, you're always, even if it's a fresh Jolly Rancher, you put it in there, you're testing it with your teeth a little bit. Oh, yeah, you're like, so when can I chew? Little, the first little thing is, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not, oh, that's got a layer to it. But it's so that's funny gotta, because what they go on to say is, you know, some grown ups would rather have gone without supper yeah. than eating those toffees. Like right now, if I'm seeing a Jolly Rancher that's got some goo <laughs> on it, I'm like, you're out. I'm going to pass. Like, yeah. I'll save those calories yeah. or just the sugar <laughs> for later. As yeah. a kid, man, 100%. Oh. Let's, let's dig into it. Let's get yeah, into Aunt Betty's. Stash. Stash of candy. Gosh, Lord, Lord, Lord. I think us. I think he's making. There's a little commentary on children too. Yeah. That they're they're wiser. Yeah. I they're yeah. they're less. Like you're eat something. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so there were nine of these odd number. So you got to figure out what to do with the uh, the odd man out. And they have this great idea that that they'll each have four and they'll plant the ninth one. Mm-hmm. And you know, if an iron bar turns into a lamppost, right. maybe there'll be a toffee tree when we wake right. up in the morning. Yep. Yep. So they actually do that. They dig it up. Um, so essentially, they create their own stash, right? That's what that comes up here, right? They, this is Betty's tree. <laughs> so this is the, Aunt Betty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so that, so you start bedding down for the night. That's really what uh, we have. One more kind of creepy major event that happens, but they're they're snuggling down. Um, <sighs> Fledge was done with dinner and they each kind of go up under uh, one of his wings and lean against his warm body. He spreads the wing over them to kind of nestle them in. This is a beautiful, it sounds so nice. Um, And as the bright young stars of that world came out, they talked over everything. How Diggory had hoped to get something for his mother and how instead of that, he had been sent on this, on this, uh, this message, this quest. And they repeated to one another all the th- all the signs by which they would know the places they were looking for it, the blue lake and the hill with a garden on top of it. The talk was just beginning to slow down as they got sleepy when suddenly Polly sat up wide awake and said, hush. So interesting too that it's great that they're talking about this and reminding each other, mm-hmm. but they also realize that they've been listened to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've yeah. been listened to, and they've 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 divulged information that that the line gave to them. Yeah, that's some important information that yep. no one else knows. Right now, see, I didn't even catch that, but let me let yeah. me. What I thought was important, though, because I get what you're saying, right? Like that's important information. Oh boy, did somebody hear that? But it makes me think that, like a lot of times in life, we do need to remind each other what the signs are. What oh to yeah. Look for. Oh yeah. And I, and I just though sitting there thinking. In such an innocent, small little way, like, oh yeah, what do we it was need to great. Look for? Yeah. But it's also like kind of test that's quizzing each other do. at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Yep. What were we told to look for? What were the things that would yep. come to pass that we need to be What's looking at? What's the truth? Oh, yeah. What's the you know? And it's 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 seen in these little kids. And how many of them that. are there? Yeah. There's three of them. Yeah. A cord of three is not easily broken. Yeah. They're yeah. sharpening yeah. each other here, guys. Right. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, and I even I even Diggory Polly. Fledge. Yeah. I even go back to just, you know, <laughs> you know, when we experience the, the kiss of the lion, those encouraging words, the, the truth behind uplifting each other, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, even if it's th- sometimes those are the signs, like the truth and what we know. Yeah. I don't know. We, like we had a conversation. We don't, you know, always talk before bed, but like, or even, you know, texting between friends, like sometimes it just it's so simple, but it's mm-hmm. so they're taking a moment to reflect, but then also look forward to the future. What do they need? Yeah. Like you said, what are the yeah. signs they need to look for? But also just, um, they're reminiscing, I'm sure on to like what's happened during that yeah. day. I, I always feel like too, that's a great point about reflection. Like I feel like I'm so much, I, well, I know I, this is just going to sound so duh, but I, I don't know we'd stop and think about this very often. The more I reflect and, and not overanalyze, but just think about what happened, I find myself living in a way that's much better in the future. Mm-hmm. When I think about what's happened, I mean, even with stuff with, with the podcast or, mm-hmm. you know, it could be something with, um, 
you know, I think about the rugby club, uh, you know, as smaller things, you know, in bigger things, I think about, you know, my interactions with my daughters, my interactions with my wife. Um, you know, I do it my job too. Like, what did I do yesterday that worked? What did I do today that worked? Um, how can I let that carry me into tomorrow? Yeah. And so often we, we get stuck on these things and then sure. we're not thinking about maybe more important things. And these can be good tools. They can help yep. you think about important things. But I often wonder if that's not more of a distraction when you should be thinking more about, yeah. Well, and now one more thing here. So like you think about like, we often talk about the written word and we learned, I remember, I remember learning over at uh, Mount Vernon Nazarene University <laughs> that uh, things like back in the day before it was written down, it was passed down. Yeah. And it was like, it, Oral was, that, language. it, it was very important to yeah. be, you know, connecting. Well, I mean, what are we doing right now? Yeah. And so yeah. I think that's sort of what's, what's neat about it. Um, I mean, I, I love that this is written down and this yeah. is awesome. We can kind of talk about it, but then one of the best ways I think to get people into a series or a book or to whatever is to talk to them about mm -hmm. it. And when they feel the energy that you're, you know, coming mm -hmm. at them with. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I kind of feel like a little bit in what you, what works when I think about that too, I do think, yeah, maybe less of this and more of this, mm -hmm. you know, and just in being there kind of like you said with like the community and being the, near someone there. I always think stuff's lot like I overdo it in emails. I overdo it in text messages. Why? Lost in translation. Because, kind yeah. Of I want yeah. you to, I'm so desperate to make sure that you understand mm -hmm. the vibe I'm coming with. You know, yeah. I'm always in this type of mood and here I am. So yeah. It's different face to face. Right. It's yeah. interesting too, how you said like this gets you into this, but how this also generates this. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah, get you, we've, we've done as much talking about this chapter as we have actually, you know, mm -hmm. reading the chapter. And that's the beauty of it too, is it brings people together yeah. and you can connect that way too. And it creates experiences. Right. So they, they probably think she hears something. Everyone listened as hard as they could. Uh, perhaps it was only the wind in the trees, said Diggory presently. I'm not so sure, said Fledge. Mm. So interesting too that Diggory's the one who thinks, eh, it's probably nothing. But Polly and Fledge both think, nah. Anyway, wait, there it goes again. By Aslan, it is something by Aslan. I like that. Mm -hmm. So they all get up. Fledge trots to and fro, sniffing and whinnying. I imagine him like a, a dog. Mm -hmm. Like I almost envision him. What's the horse in Tangled? Tangled? <laughs> yeah. You know, you can yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah 100%. Or even um, uh, Sven in Frozen, mm -hmm. the, the reindeer, right? Uh, they kept on thinking they saw things. And there was one time when Polly was perfectly certain she had seen a tall, dark mm -hmm. figure gliding quickly away in a westerly direction but they caught nothing and in the end Fledge lay down again and the children re-snuggled if that is the right word I love that word under his wings they went to sleep at once Fledge stayed awake much longer moving his ears to and fro in the darkness and sometimes giving a little shiver with his skin as if a fly had lighted on him but in the end he too slept so uh, awesome too how he took on that role he as did. guardian uh, not only you know you know, uh, physically with his wing, but even symbolically as a wing over mm -hmm. these children, protecting them and, and keeping an eye out. Um, so there's a really cool, what it reminded me of in mm -hmm. Two Towers is uh -huh. the three hunters are getting close to Fangorn and they're by a fire, campfire, and they're talking and all of a sudden they look, they look up and they see a hooded figure and they almost do like a double take and mm -hmm. then it's gone. And they're like, they think it's Saruman and his mm -hmm. treachery. And then they find out later that it was Gandalf. Yeah. You know, yeah. Gandalf the White. Or, or I guess, yeah, yeah, we, it is confirmed. But even for a while, we're guessing, like, was that Gandalf? Was yeah, that was Saruman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the same kind of thing. Like, you know, someone, it's not confirmed who this is, but but we know who it is, you know, yeah. um, the only person it could be. So it's interesting, too, yeah. that, you know, I, I think of Fledge and I think, did he have a separate conversation with Aslan? have a plan oh, yeah did he have or does he just know like yeah instinctually he, and it you know because aslan gave him those special powers and gifts and trusts him maybe they didn't have a conversation maybe it's just like a i trust you you know what your job yeah. is kind of thing like and it, i mean fledge is fledge went to sleep yeah mm -hmm. he's not gonna sit there fearful all night he's oh, doing yeah, his job true. protecting yeah. Do you think some of his country horse came out too? Maybe. Like, like uh, I think, you know, maybe a horse in the country would be more wary of like wolves or coyotes or something and, and more wild around them. Whereas a cabbie, 
uh, or you know a horse with a cancel, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, handsome, know. Uh, a horse pulling, it would, whatever. Yeah, wouldn't in London. Exactly. London, you wouldn't be worrying about you wolves. You know what I'm saying, mate? Yes. So, well, I were. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that How much of that kinda... nature comes out that he's back in Narnia? Yeah. yeah. And he's wild again, kind of, you know. And, yeah, huh. he also needs to sleep so that way he mm-hmm. can be ready for them tomorrow. Like, you yep. can't just, you know, yeah. do that. So. True. Big journey still ahead. They don't know how far they have to go. Right. Well, that was an awesome chapter. Uh, so, so close to... I don't know. We're not that far. What are we? How many chapters left? Like five? Was, what twelve? I have no idea what happens after this. By the way, you know, some weeks I start <laughs> that like I it's like it's short and it's like oh boy. Okay, so I have to seconds. admit, my class is how many chapters? There's left? three more left. Three more chapters. Then we're in Lion Witch in the Wardrobe. That is yeah. radical. That's Get radical. out of here, dude. That's radical. That is worth celebrating. We're almost a seventh of the way through this journey. That's awesome. Guys, I have a secret confession. I cannot wait to get to his sci-fi stuff. Silent Planet. Okay. Do you know about this? No. No. He wrote a sci-fi uh, no idea. series as well. And it's like really good. Is it really? It's like have really, you read it? No, but I know it's really good. Okay. Or should we go to Screw Tape Letters? Or what should we do know. after this? We'll have to wait to see. Uh, okay, know. but anyway, we're excited to be in Narnia. Um, we have a lamppost letter in from Beth. What did you like? You like me to read this? You guys, sorry, want to read it? this yeah. the video is gonna catch all my yawns. I try to turn away as much as I can. Look on yonder to oh, how does this work? Okay. sitting in the fields, all right. baby, baby. I apologize if I let's see. I put that mic right there on you. Okay, speak right. All now. right, <laughs> Beth says. I have been a Lewis Narnia fan for a long, very long time. When I was in first grade, one of our parish priests would read a chapter a week. Of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe to us. The following summer, I read the rest of the series with my parents. I had fallen in love with Aslan, and I read the series repeatedly along with Lewis's other works. As the years passed, I kept reading them, but I also enjoyed the audios and the BBC movies. Then came college, and I ended up taking a course on Mr. Lewis, taught by the priest who had led me through the wardrobe so many years earlier. Hmm. By this time, I think I was on my fourth set of books. Then I found your podcast. I've been playing catch up by reading a chapter and then listening to your podcast. The books I'm using are the ones from college filled with highlights and notes. Father John passed on many years ago, but I can feel his happiness as I read the books again and think of him and the introduction he gave me to the Chronicles. Thank you for doing this podcast and bringing back different moments of my life and happy memories of a priest that I still miss. And I know it's a little late, but congratulations on the newest member of your family. Oh, thank you very much. Aslan's blessings on her and all of you. Beth, how would you say Beth's name so I don't... Lobs? Perfect. Beth, you're going to have to help us on that. I probably butchered that. Thank you, Beth. That's mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so, so cool, cool that you... I'm, Same I, book. Okay, Something so I have a couple questions. Yeah. I wonder if... Did you know the priest was going to be teaching... Right? That's what she said. Oh, the yeah. priest was teaching yeah, t- the, the college course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's and interesting. you sign up for huh? because you're thinking. Yeah. 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 That's Good really memories. cool. Yeah. And there's cool her using as she's reading with us. She's using those books. Man, there's something about like when does when does a oh, dude when does a book transform from just like any old book that you could get at second hand or, mm-hmm. or, or Barnes and Noble half price mm-hmm. to this yeah. Like sacred text, like a friend, right? An I old mean, friend, a, yeah. a special book that if something happened to it, you would like mourn it almost like you'd lo- like you lost a friend or or a, or a companion. Like I know which Lord of the Rings it is for me. Yeah, uh, this is the only Narnia I've ever owned. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about like my my Bible that I've had since I was like twelve yeah, or something. Yeah. Um, I, like when does that? I wonder when that transfer happens. Does it happen slowly? It's happened all at once, you know. Like each highlight she made, each pencil scratch, like did it? The bond became deeper and deeper. You know what I mean? Like it's just crazy, dude. Yeah, I I think I said this on Mm. an unexpected podcast, and I want to share it with Sarah. I think I can't remember if I did or not, but I know I've mentioned it once, and you may have just forgotten it. But like when I went back, when I one of the first books I ever actually finished and read was The Hobbit. Mm. And when I was at the NAS, I went back for a placement to Mount Vernon Middle School mm-hmm. when I was there. 
and I went and I looked and I found the Hobbit, the same book. I pulled it out. There's my little. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ezra Kirk. And I was. Yeah, because like, you used to have to write it on and, the card. Yeah. yeah. You'd, and I was like, I was like, I can't believe Isn't that this wild? is here. Man, did you take it? I did not. Oh. And I actually, because they did not have another copy. So I put it back. Oh, man. And you could have like thinking, bought them and given Oh, I, I remember thinking to myself, I'll come back and get that. And I never did. And so you think it's still it's, there? I wonder. I still to this day kind of wonder. And I, I remember. Could, um, I bet you could contact someone. I bet I could, and it would just be really neat. Maybe you know. I know they changed. Marsha Orsborn could get in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They changed well, what? I know sometimes like if you fill if you have too many names on it, like yeah, they'll change sure. that card will right. come out or whatever. But I always thought that was kind of neat to look back. And I remember when we were in. School. And that was like years later. Yeah. Like oh, that was years, years later, later, like a decade. It was still in there. It was, the, it was a front and back card. You you you. The, so yeah. I mean, either well, they don't had, even use cards now. Sometimes, yeah, they yeah. just have like the barcode that they scan. Really? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so that was neat that you could write that, you could pull it out, you could see who mm -hmm. had checked it out. There were all these names after mine, and I was mm. like, "Wow, that who, was a what know? a cool thing about library." That was great. It was yeah. cool. It was I know the kids now. Kids listening are like, "What? You had to write your name on a card?" Yeah, yeah. It's just scanned now. But right. yeah, that was it. Remember, you would write your name on it. And they and, held that. As, and then you, would, yeah, it was well, the place too, Like marker. you said, you could see who had held the book, who had read the book, yes. who had. Yes. Same with school books. Remember how yeah. you would write yep. your name in yep. the year and everything? Was, like, oh my gosh, I, I got Jamie Peterson's book. I think book. one yes. time yeah. I saw my, like one of my friends had one of my, one of my brother's Siblings. books. Yeah. And they were six, eight, yeah. ten years older right. than me. So. That's pretty it's cool. cool. It yeah, is actually cool. cool. It's There's like rings a, on a tree in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this yeah. is a funny little connection, but um, t honestly, here it is. In, in um, Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince, mm -hmm. when they pass down that book, they uh, Ron and Harry are fighting over a book in a cabinet. No idea which one. Like I have no idea, <laughs> but it's really neat because they pull it out and it's someone's old book. Mm -hmm. Snape. And there's the tons Snapes. of you spoiling it for people. Was it Snape's? Snape's book, yeah. I just guessed. Oh, did you really? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's cool though because all those notes, you know, are yeah. in all this stuff in the side and the margins, and you're like, whoa. It's also Her, why Harry, I, I love your mother. Uh, he did. He did though. I've seen he that did. movie. Okay. But anyway, I just a connection because like the reason uh, my dad, we 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 really struggled up. My, my mom passed away with um her nursing books, and I thought, you know, uh, yeah. even just the, the the simplest little marking in this, I could not bring myself. To sell them. Oh no, yeah. couldn't do it. Yeah, no. And there's boxes and totes, and it's just sort of like dad's like, eventually we some of this we can let go. What what can we let go? What can we not? Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like I don't know. I know there's no reason to really keep them, but I saw her tutoring people through those books, and I'm mm -hmm. like, man, that's when you take a like into her. I'm not sure. Like, mm -hmm. There there was her go to book mm -hmm. that she would go to. This was the one. You don't they don't assign this in the class. Y'all need it. I remember her telling mm -hmm. that to people, and it was like that was where the book transcended. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And it had all the notes. So. That's cool. I, I've thought about that with the girls. Like, I I know which Lord of the Rings is important to me. But, um, you know, as we finished Return of the King, I, I bought three different books for the podcast to go yeah. through this reread. And I've marked through them and written notes in the margin right. and underlined right. the crap out of it. Right. And there's three books. And the first one, Billy signed for Sarah and Winnie. Yep. Two Towers, I want... Um, when we go to Dallas, yeah. one of the hobbits to sign to probably Dom to yeah. sign that one yeah. to Charlotte. And then Return of the King, I would like uh, Sean and Elijah mm -hmm. to sign to baby number three. Yeah. And yeah. that way, like when I'm long gone, you know, yep. if they ever want to pick up and think if they want to read it, like through my eyes at a point mm -hmm. in time, yeah. just like, you know, um, they yeah. can. Yeah. That kind of thing. So yeah, because th th this is what Dad used. Yeah, you know when he did the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and while that those Aragorn, there's Aragorn quotes really excited Dad. Like yeah. wow, yeah, yeah. you really no, related really, to that. Though. I yeah. mean, look what he wrote in the margin about this. Yeah. you know they explore yeah. that. It's a little yeah. insight it is, to your heart. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Definitely. and actually, you've really honestly turned me on to to doing that because a lot of times I just do audio. I've turned books. you on. I know. I knew that was going to come back on me. Come back. <laughs> but. <laughs> um, but I like you I made it so far. I know, I know, I know. I also love too that people can look at the look that just took place there. It's fantastic. Um, so you know what I'm saying though, like I, I, because I started I, and actually today I was like at school and I was only there for half a day and I was making notes in uh, Return of the King. That left the book Sorry. at school. That's left me. it at school. So I brought this I one thanks you, but no. I left the other one. So, uh, but I, I do think there is something to it. Now I'm starting to think like, man, I love that I'm the one. 
you know, getting you buy that new book. I'm the one who's who's making that crack, who's making that, you mm-hmm. know, um, breaking the book open and, and stuff. And you know, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Lord have mercy. Let's, Lord, let's... thank you, Beth. You sparked some incredible yes, conversation. Thank you. Uh, your story is beautiful. Also, kids, if you are not sure what a library card looks like, yeah. in the back of a book, go YouTube it or <laughs> Google it. Um, yeah. And hats off to Father John for um, yes. you know introducing you to Narnia and that yes. special bond that you had with him. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Last, uh, yeah. Hats off to him. Yeah. Fantastic. Having a mentor like that's fantastic. If anyone, what just happened? Are you guys okay? We, we, no, she, I was just had his hand raised. Hand and I, I, was waiting for you to I thought he was you. feeling the Lord. I didn't know if you know, the presence him. of the that's Lord. Just, or sorry, whatever, I wasn't you know? trying. Okay. Quick. Yeah. If anyone does happen to have one of those old library like oh yeah uh index card oh i have cupboard. some you have some of those cupboards the weather oh, like cupboard. little... my mom and dad had wait. one that they got rid of yeah so they got rid of it oh you know where the old index co- yeah. you know those, like the they had a full card? full um yeah, cabinet. cabinet anybody has one of those no cards but the drawers that you could put cards in that's what i'm saying yeah that's what i'm saying if anybody those are so cool yeah and they're just not around you want to buy one if, or something those yes just... i would buy one off of someone i could have so had it someone sorry has one reach reach out to me and you know stuff they leave it there I think they gave it to Steph for helping them, maybe. I've always wanted This is very in, in, interesting information Sorry. for everybody, but yeah. <laughs> you think I can do it? Yeah. Huh? Oh, oh my I didn't goodness. know what you were trying to do. Okay. That's pretty good. Right, Turkish go. delight. Yes, but thank you, Beth. That's wonderful. Uh, send in your uh, Lewis letters. We love having them. Thank we you love for the well wishes them. for Charlotte. Yes, She's lovely. yes. Um, She's yeah. walking. She is. She's starting to walk. Seven, eight steps today. We have a video. And she'll be uh, one by the time. Yeah, but... Yeah, I mean, two weeks she'll be yeah, one. Two weeks, oh, crazy, yeah. little booger. Mm-hmm. All right, so Turkish delight. What is the most pleasant place you've ever snuggled and or re-snuggled? If that's even a word. Dang it, mm. missed big. On can I can I do two? Yes. Okay, so one do three is if you want. Okay, th- thank you. Um, so one is two, just two. Like uh, it's got to be. You guys, you know, take this for it. Like it was with my mom. You know, yeah. like it really was, and that's that's sort of like. I will never forget that year, you know, where it was like, I don't know, you grow up and you're sort of like, you know, all right, you know, you, I, I, you get older and the way you act with your parents is a little bit different from mm-hmm. when you, whatever. But during Wait, the, that changes. Don't, don't, I know. I know. I'm sorry. Guys. I'm sorry. But it, you know, it's, he's it's, in here before the podcast saying someday, man, she's going to be saying, daddy, can I have the keys? No, she's she not. Took him, she took him. She and he starts really. smiling. I'm like, yes, yeah. bro, that's not funny, she man. Starts, like, she it's cute already for you. She acts like, yeah. right, I'm leaving, but I'm, literally it's yeah. two seconds. She's like, I'm back. We're like, thank goodness. Thank I got God. the mail. I right. get the mail. I'm back. That's just, she just goes to get the mail. I saw thank that, though, Lord. and I was like, I saw 16-year-old winning. Oh, went, stop. Lord. I'm sorry. Okay, yes. <laughs> you were like. You do. But you, you yeah, know. Yeah, okay, I know. That's you do. It's like It's like. Wow. And it was uh, neat for me because I remember coming home and, and, you know, it was like my sister and I, we reverted back to like we were, you know, 10 and 11 years old, like, you know, curling up on the couch. You need with your mama. So, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. So that was neat. Also, a place that was interesting. Um, I was with my, my good buddy, Matt, and I was out in Portland. We went to a beach house. Mm-hmm. The most comfortable beach house I have ever been in my life. Mm-hmm. We were out there for days, and I I would love to. Actually you two got a cuddle on, or well, is that what I mean, we're getting there. Okay, <laughs> um, they you, you, ever see, you know how upstairs you guys have that like. Is that okay with you releasing this information? <laughs> I, I didn't get his approval before I talked about this, but um, wait upstairs. You, oh, what's that little window seat window you seat. got up there. Yeah, right. Yeah. So they had one of those, and it was. I kid you not. You, I have pictures of this. Anytime Ez does this, it's it's serious. Serious. I, we were out and about, and you know, it's Portland, it's, it's not Portland anymore because we're over on the, I forget what the town was, it's Lincoln City, I think, and mm. we were staying with somebody, and it was their grandparents' place, right? Mm. And I asked the girl who we were with or whatever, I said, hey, can I, you guys, get, like, it's, it's cold, I didn't really pack anything for that or whatever, and she's like, you know, my grandpa's flannel is upstairs, and she went and grabbed this flannel. And you were like, cool. and I literally was in the colors of my homeland. I, I couldn't believe it, I was like, and, 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 and I, I wore it, I was like. I took pictures of it. I have pictures of me mm-hmm. wearing it. It was so cool. It was such a good flannel. Did you think about sneaking it with you? I did. I thought about it. And actually, she said, she's like jokingly, she goes, that'll never leave here. She's like, I mean, she gave, I was kind of saying, Yikes, she, she wasn't saying I couldn't take it, but she was saying, she was it, saying, if like, you take it, I'll find you. She, she was kind of saying, it's one of those things everyone can always come and like, that's, that's the, like the flannel. And I was like, that's cool. This is yeah. cool. This is like four people that come to this house or whatever. And I was in that flannel and I was like, um, 
my buddy Matt loves to tell stories. Mm -hmm. You know, I love to tell stories. We tell stories. Mm -hmm. We talk, you know, we're, we're big talkers, and, you know. And so yeah, he, uh, uh, he's pacing. <laughs> he's pacing. And I'm literally just sitting there in the sun, and I'm looking at the way, like the, like, I'm. Mm. The beach oh, house, you said, yeah, right? Yeah, on, on, the, on the West Coast, seeing the waves come this way, at just oh, a different crazy. way, a different, um, it was colder, it was whatever. And I'm sitting there with the sun's coming through, and he's just telling me this story, and he's retelling, um, I think it was a video game or just some story. Then he went from that. We went to. We spent six hours, and I think I sat there, fell asleep, woke up, kept going, and I was just like, "Keep going, man! Keep telling me the story." And we sat there, and it was the longest, shortest day ever. Huh. And, and we so sometimes cool. he and I refer to that, I'm like the beach house. Like we got to go back sometime. The it boathouse. Was, it was mm -hmm. cool. Is that what you're thinking of? Um, I mean, yeah. it, like him describing that. Does oh, it make yeah, you think yeah, of the yeah. boathouse in, in did, New Zealand? Yeah. yeah. Is it my turn? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you gave two. You got a third? No, no that's, good. That's, good. that's good. Yeah. Now I'm worried that uh, Matt's going to say, well, now wait a second. They just compared this to their, their boat. <laughs> Matt's going to be like, as seriously. Yeah. Do no, but, there might okay, be but some. I will say the boat house was beautiful yeah. in New Zealand and it was cozy. But the house was either too hot or too cold. Hats off. Because the, we could but shout out to Patrick and I'm a Kate. Yes, we could not. Like, oh, I couldn't regulate the stove. The I was terrible with the stove. And we had the fire going, so like it was, it was either blazing hot in there, <laughs> or in the middle of the night we were like, "It's really cold." It's crazy. Um, it's so funny. that was great. No, I was yeah. gonna say actually, the pl okay, so snuggling your babies after they're born is pretty mm. pleasant. Um, so that is definitely up there. Yeah. I will say too, skin to skin. Yes, yeah. just and, and they're fresh little, just cute oh, and they're little, little, little itty bitty body. Remember when they they go like. <sighs> Yeah, like and that just little breathing being able stuff. To, mm. They cozy right up on you, so that's that's yeah. that's very pleasant. But so if I have to, that's technically two so far. No, yes, yeah, yeah. do as many as you want. Good, yeah. Um, no, I was thinking back actually to the um, LEP two. Mm, the I, hammock. Yeah. I was thinking that too. You and me. Whoa. I was exhausted. I felt tired. Mm -hmm. I was. Everyone was having a good time. I. It was chillier. The mm -hmm. fire was going. There was yeah. music playing. There were people talking. Yeah. All the sounds. It was great, wasn't it? And the smells too. And the I, smoker I was still lingering. I hadn't spent much time. Yeah. Fire. And okay, so I'll let y'all in a little insight. I hadn't spent much time with Lane that day, and it's funny because before yeah. that he was like, <laughs> "Here we go." He's no, he's just like, "Hey, Sarah, let's you Here we know, go. let's hang out. Like, let's because yeah. yeah. the girls were gone, and we right. that was really was that the first time we had been away from Winnie and Charlotte. Yeah, both of them. Both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was like, you know, let's just, let's make sure we get some time together and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was doing his thing a lot of the night and I was having a, <laughs> yeah, this you is great. know, this is great. You know, I mean, you come, you come approach me too. I asked me out I'm on a date. I'm pretty sure I did because I said, Hey, will you come like <laughs> snuggle with me and lay All on I know the hammock? I saw the end result. I saw the end result. And was there was music. It doesn't matter playing. what happens in the middle of the story. It happens how it ends. What? No, it does. That's why I'm telling this. I wouldn't yeah. say it was pleasant if it wasn't pleasant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know. I'm... It was a good memory. I, I okay. actually. It was one of mine that I was. Guys. No, so yeah. I mean, uh, the, you were the vibing temperature with us? was perfect. Yeah, we much. had blanket. Like we were yeah. just snuggled up. Yep. I don't even remember falling asleep. Yeah, I don't either. And I did. We did. Oh, I don't know how long we were out. Fell asleep. Yeah. Woke up to the sound of just probably laughter. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's music going on too. There's music. Yeah. The flute was the guitar played. was being played. Yeah. Michael was singing Please. for a while. Mike Charles. Yeah. yeah. And, and so Kirsten, yeah. yeah. I don't great. even know what happened. So yeah. shout out to all the people that were at my house while I took a nap. <laughs> um, it was great. It was yeah, it very was pleasant. Great. It was beautiful. That, was night that whole and, thing was magical. Yeah. It, it actually was. was very mm. nice to see you two over there. Like it, it just like. Our host hosting everybody and <laughs> just falling asleep. No, in a good way. No, like, I know, I know. Because we couldn't even tell you were asleep. We just knew that it was like it was. Uh, I just assumed you guys were just going well, my, holding okay. Each so, other. like, like really my nice, my favorite thing you know? to do too is to set things up so that everyone else can enjoy mm -hmm. them, and then just stepping back and going. Mm -hmm. I'm my pretty work sure it's done. Yeah. Also, woke up yeah. to the house yeah. and everything being cleaned up. Yeah, it was a dwarf. It was a very dwarf thing. Like we were like Bilbo, yeah, and the dwarves and who put everything. I'm pretty sure away. it was Charlotte Hinton yeah. who led the oh, charge. Yeah. Yeah, so shout out to you, yeah, Charlotte. I don't yeah. know if Big you time. listen to this podcast. She does. But, yeah. yeah, but that is my favorite thing is to is to facilitate stuff and then just yeah, step well, back. Right, because it's the best. It just yeah. feels yeah. Because then it's like, look at these people and having a great time. This right. is what it's all about. Right. Like you see other friends. Well, it's that feeling of other people experiencing that joy of just being that community. You like. 
I don't know. And so that, that was really magical. And I yeah. joke about not being around Lane, but yeah. I, w- I mean, I was, I like to give him a hard time. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah. just because before he was like, let's spend all day and together. No one was, no one was like hanging out with no, you or were, anything. Stop. You just were like, let's just spend. And I, I know why, because we hadn't, we hadn't spent a lot of time. Just the two of us. Just the two of us until like, we can make it if we Probably try. even before when he was born, so. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. yeah. What's your most pleasant place since? Yeah. Uh, my babies, my girls. Uh, when, again, not to steal yours, but, um, you I know. First. You when they were first. first. When they were first born in yeah. the hospital. And then he actually even, no, not even at the hospital. In my chair. Um, sun shining through. Sun shining in in the morning. Uh, skin to skin, called it up. Yeah. They sleep for like two or three hours at a time and they're just still and by you and you feel them breathing and you don't even want to move. Mm-hmm. You just, you don't even want to move. You're just like soak it up. And I remember I've taken like videos and pictures of both just mm-hmm. so that when I'm old and senile, I can look back on it and go, yeah, that's what it I felt like. I have so like. many pictures of bedtime with the girls. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But just those, those first mm-hmm. cuddles. Not to say that now, I mean, now it's even, I'd probably argue more special because it doesn't happen as often. Uh, like we're putting Winnie to bed tonight. I, I haven't really put Charlotte to bed yet because she's still. We saw you. We we, yeah, we, were, we, we, were, we were snooping on you guys on the monitor and it was when she had crawled out of bed and sat cute. on your lap. Oh, oh yeah. And then, but then she got back in bed and she was like playing with my hand. It was, she hasn't done that for a while, laying on my arm and playing with my hand and stuff yeah. until she fell asleep. And so, yeah, but I haven't, I haven't gotten to put Charlotte to bed like that yet. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll be nice. But I think yeah. when you get to be an adult, you still need your, pa- you know, like I yeah. like, I feel like that sometimes, you know, a good, you know, a good snuggle, yeah. a good hug, a good. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I hug my parents every time. Your kids yeah, are going to need that day. when they get older. Yeah. That's yeah. I can tell you. I yep. like it's. It's I, good. It's I good. didn't you mean want, to interrupt you know. No. Yeah. I do have another one though. Yeah. My other one is, um, it's not even. Well, it could have been at our house, but I think my my strongest memories of it were at Sugar Street in Mount Vernon on the pullout bed, um, like right after we got married mm-hmm. and Arwen laying on our bed, yeah. down at our feet, snuggling with our feet. She would never, in the mornings, she would come up and kind of snuggle around and play and mm-hmm. do and spread her earwax everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then Joey would come up, my parents' little yeah. terrier, yeah. and he would... You know, they'd like fight with each other and snuggle and um, yeah, that's that's another one of mine. I miss snuggling Arwen big time, hmm. big time. Is there but, anything better than the sun shining through when you're just cuddled no. up? Man. Waking up late. It's, it's good. The best. Yeah. All right. Well, Sometimes that was. Sometimes I feel that lion's kiss during, you know what I mean? You oh, need that's some a, rest. That's a perfect you need time. some peace. Yeah. You need some. Yeah. It's a perfect time. It gives time. you some it's courage. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Wow. Mm. All right. Well, uh, I guess let us, isn't that interesting too? Wow. I, I asked for our most pleasant place and we all talked about people. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not where you're snuggling. It's who you're snuggling. Yeah. 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 It's true. It and is, how, and yeah. how, how, who you're snuggling makes, Gosh. makes a place even more beautiful. Well, and even yours yeah. was, you, you were, were so Matt. comfortable you were and snuggling. that was oh, yeah. it, and the, his presence no. and his, you know, like a it, friend's voice. And Diggory let's not, and Polly fall asleep or, yeah, or almost yeah. fall asleep talking to one another. And right? let's not forget the grandpa you snuggled. His I mean, plan. you kind of indirectly snuggled grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got to move on all here, right, folks. All right, all right. <laughs> you caught me off guard there. I was like, Papa, what are <laughs> you thinking? You're like, what's grandpa? <laughs> I was like, Lord. All right, here we go. All right. Hey, so here's the deal. We actually had a really good conversation before this. Um, kind mm-hmm. of funny. Um, I can't remember. I shared a story about Chipotle. We might post it. <laughs> We might post that on, uh, yeah. on I think, on, on Further Up's Patreon because yeah. it was really good. We might post it both places because uh, something I, I've been struggling with for a couple of weeks and I want to share it with you. <laughs> oh God, yeah. So uh, stay tuned for that. And you can you can find that at uh, patreon.com uh, forward slash further up. And uh, follow us on Instagram at Aslan Moves. Uh, also, the Facebook group is there. And really, truly, um, we I, I would love, I mean, I love like this this letter today was more great. lewis letters yeah yeah i think yeah. that would be i think you, i think we got like one more on deck and then we need we need some some new ones yeah so if anyone so if you're thinking like, about it's, yeah it's so it's just so cool and it, yeah, if, if anything great. that's actually more i think how you can support the podcast than anything mm-hmm. truly yes. i actually yes. really do believe that because 100%. it gives us something to one read and talk about and discuss amongst ourselves it makes mm-hmm. us feel closer to you and it's just something we can share yes. so you know you can send those to further up 
pod at gmail.com. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so that's Aslan's Army. And uh, Sarah, you want to take us out? Yeah, next time we'll be in Chapter 13, An Unexpected Meeting. And as always, we'll continue to follow Aslan. He's not safe, but he's good indeed. We'll see you next time. And remember, Aslan moves. <laughs>